Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So it's bike week down here in Daytona. Went to a bike show yesterday. Ah, what a pain in the ass. It was only eight miles from my house, a straight shot. All I had to go up is one road. <laughs> Took me an hour and a half to get eight miles, just inching forward in traffic. Finally get up there to the destination Daytona compound, which is really just a Harley Davidson dealership and a bunch of empty fucking buildings in a strip mall because Harley Davidson uh, owns the property and they charge way too much money for all the units at the strip mall. So nobody wants to be up there. So it's kind of a weird fucking place and they fill the property with vendors, mostly corporate vendors, and big giant trailers. And I don't find the corporate vendors very interesting, but I wanted to see the bike show their property is way too big and was elbow to elbow. They took all the water fountains out of the fucking property because of COVID. So you had to pay $5 for a bottle of water, pay to use the bathroom. I get up to the bike show. I was gonna do a video on it and, and share it with you guys, just for fun. Only three bikes. Only three bikes showed up. Should be 300. Fucking custom scene is so dead, man. This is the biggest bike show in the world. This isn't some offshoot show. This is the show. This is the one that makes everybody famous. Three bikes. It was bullshit. So you didn't get a video, that's why. Let's get into today's topic. I wanna to talk about genuine thought. Genuine thought as opposed to ingenuine thought. Fake thought. Thought that's fed to you that voice in your head that maybe you think it's you but it's not it's preconditioned that's the brainwashed version of you that's the one that regurgitates that parrots like a parrot that just sings the fucking song it's heard just sings back the fucking repetitive shit your parents told you growing up the shit your teachers told you the shit your stupid friends told you the stuff that you learned somewhere along your fucking path the, your dumb professors all this bullshit and it's not you and I, I down uh, I talk down about it like that because when something is not you it's bullshit we have to learn along our path but one of the best ways of parenting isn't through over teaching through hovering over somebody and making sure they have every bit of information it's to kind of let them sink or swim it's one of the more valuable ways of learning to teach them just enough that they, to, they need to accomplish the task but let them try to figure out the rest let them try to excel so they're not just a robot they're actually engaging with their mind and their body in an activity and thinking actively thinking of what do i do next and how do i figure this out and sure some of that may be reinventing the wheel but that's what we have to go through you can't excel forward with really high powered thought until you can start engaging in the basic shit and get there naturally. I can tell you all day the Ten Commandments or simple rules that I make up, but it goes in one ear and out the other. You have to learn for yourself why it's bad to lie, why it's bad to kill somebody. That has to be something that you figure out, and that you make an opinion upon yourself, and that's not just fed to you through repetition. There's so much of who we are that is really just a reflection of our training. I'm about individuality. I think individuality is a good thing. It, we're very often too much the same simply because a lot of us are scared. A lot of us are looking for validation. A lot of us mimic and copy others to an extreme to where we lose who we are. Copy people's style, copy people's attitudes, we copy people's lives. We, we copy them in every way. I mean, not all of us. But you wonder, how do we become sheep? I mean, that's how. Where's the individualism? You go into a college uh, campus. I haven't been on a campus in a while, but... I did go to college and I remember this myself. 
the school I went to was in Los Angeles and it was very overcrowded and I, I went to UCLA which was insanely overcrowded but I didn't, did not graduate from UCLA because it was too expensive. And I remember seeing it on campus at UCLA just an ocean of baseball caps, backpacks and hoodies. Tens of thousands of them. And every image printed on every hoodie is different and every image embroidered on every baseball cap not every most of them were different so there goes your individualism right you can have your sneakers and your baseball cap and your hoodie and that's your brand of individualism and then we can all dress exactly the same people aren't doing this consciously they're falling in line people stifle their own creative spirit in order to fall in line to be accepted. Very often, it's, it doesn't even have to be this desperate need for validation. It can just simply be going with the flow, just going along with the crowd. Until a lot of us learned how to smoke cigarettes for, for our first time. We're just going along with the crowd. I wasn't hell-bent on learning how to smoke cigarettes. It was just something that 14-year-old kids did. Hey, you want a cigarette? Sure. And we'd all sit outside and smoke them. I wasn't thinking for myself. I didn't even like cigarettes. We can realize that we're being manipulated by monitoring our first responses. You want to slightly detach from your emotions. And when something happens, good or bad, that initial response that you have Particularly when it's negative, it's, it's, it's important to notice this. We go through an, a, a positive and negative roller coaster ride, many of us do, all week long with good information and bad information that comes into our little computer that sits on top of our shoulders. And when negative information comes uh, into our heads, many of us have a knee-jerk reaction of fight or flight, fear, outrage, that kind of thing. Those are conditioned. Those aren't always natural. Sometimes it is. If a bomb goes off right now while I'm making this video, you'll probably see me be like, whoa, you know, I mean, that's a natural reaction. That's not conditioned. If I see a, 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 a puppy get eaten by an alligator, I, you know, I, I might have a natural urge to save it or to feel sorry for it. Or, you know, these, there's natural emotions that come up, but you have to learn to separate what's your natural animalistic mode and a preconditioned mode that's been thrust upon you by society as a whole. So our first response is usually a conditioned response and not who we truly are. It's worth knowing that. Remember that. And then I'll say it again. Our first response is usually conditioned and not who we truly are. You really want to pay close attention to that because that initial response we get of anger or fear that can ruin relationships that can start a snowball effect of bad decisions for that day, for that week, or for the rest of your life. You could very simply just be walking around creating a life for yourself, putting energy in different directions that you're not intending to. You may be thinking one way, but acting another. And when you're acting differently than you're thinking, that's a problem. We need to be able to check that. The, the reason why people do this is through conditioning. You have to be brave enough. It really is bravery. You have to be brave enough to be who you really are at all times. So your reactions slowly become you rather than conditioned. Now, extreme individuals stand out 
simply because they're not going along with the program of the rest of people. So something bad might happen. And once you get past this preconditioning, you may not have the same response as those people around you. They may look at you like, what's wrong with you? Do not become weak. Do not fall victim to that validation to go with the crowd. You may be the only one in the room thinking clearly. Going with this group think can be incredibly harmful and it can really hurt our lives. So in individuality is about bravery and a slight detachment from your emotions so you can give the real you a chance to respond. You may have several responses to any given event, no matter what it is. The first response isn't always you. The first response, in fact, is always your preconditioning. That knee-jerk re response that you get is your conditioned self. That's why it's good to have that detachment, to allow the, the real you, the real voice, which may be a little quieter, allow that voice to get louder. So you can respond to the world rather than react to it, in a very similar word, but in my mind, one kind of has a little bit more of a calculated action, whereas a reaction just kind of feels like this animalistic fight or flight. Practice genuine thought through practicing your bravery, being who you truly are. You practice genuine thought through a slight detachment to count to 10 before you respond to anything, no matter what it is, just as a practice. Next time anything happens in your life where it could be a negative response, it could be as simple as your kid comes home and says they got suspended from school, count to 10 first. G listen for the real you. And practice this in every aspect of your life and that true individuality will express itself more. It'll become your default mode. You'll, you'll get rid of some of that conditioning. And that's the name of the game. It's all food for thought. Thanks for watching.